Today we're going to the SC Maglev and Railway Park, the train museum in Nagoya. I enjoyed it so much. I'm going to show you how to get there and what there is to see and do, including a retired Dr. Yellow that you can go inside, exhibits about the new Maglev line that's scheduled to open in 2027. It's even faster than the fastest bullet train. I try out the Shinkansen driving simulator. There's this amazing diorama, the cafe and the shop and the shop is fantastic, so don't miss that. Thank you to Japan Railways Central and the SC Maglev and Railway Park for providing our tickets to the museum and arranging the Shinkansen simulator for me so I could show it to you. There's new Japan videos on Thursdays if you wanna subscribe, and there's lots more on my channel about Japanese trains and the Shinkansen. But first, let's fuel up with a quick snack from a bakery in Nagoya Station. I love Japanese bakeries. They look really chocolatey. And these things are fancy. Wow. Wow. The scones do look good. Maybe that was matcha white chocolate. He has got this super chocolatey pan au chocolat. That's the chocolatiest one you've ever seen. I've got a seasonal item, the sakura and pan. This is delicious. It's got sweet red bean paste, sakura cherry blossom flavor paste, and cream inside. To get to the museum, take the Aonami line from Nagoya Station to Kinjo Futo Station. It's the end of the line, so you really can't go wrong. There's a sign to the Aonami line. Everything is well signposted, and this station seems pretty easy to navigate, although really busy on a Saturday. There's a sign up there to the Aonami line and the FC Maglev and Railway Park. That was actually one of the first things I saw when I came off the Shinkansen yesterday. And here's the ticket gates for the Aonami line. It was actually pretty easy to find and so far we only had to go on one level of the station. It costs 360 yen each way. You can use your Suica card or any other IC card. You can't use a JR pass because this line isn't run by Japan Railways. The trains are very frequent, about every 15 minutes. You can see our hotel from the train, the Nagoya Marriott Associa. There's a room tour in my previous video. We were at the end of the train, so we kept ourselves amused trying to guess what all these controls and dials are for. It looks quite complicated. I'm gonna fail the simulator. The journey takes about 25 minutes. It takes you through some interesting industrial areas of Nagoya and the port. SC Maglev and Railway Park is right next to the station. It's such a huge building. Legoland Japan is right next door if you want to visit that as well. There's a sign to the Maglev and Railway Park as soon as you come out the ticket gate. And there's also a sign to Legoland Japan, which is right next door. There's several railway museums around Japan. I think this is going to be the best one because it has bullet trains and it's about the new Maglev line they're building between Tokyo and Nagoya. I'm also looking forward to the shop. I'm hoping they've got Shinkansen merch and Dr. Yellow merch. Let's go in and see what there is. Right here in the entrance, look at these lift up trains, they look really cool. It's going from the past all the way up to trains of the present and the future. This is the mascot of the police by the security cameras. And this is a game, a board game in Japan where you roll the dice and ride trains called Momotetsu. They've got a stamp. Here's the next plate. I haven't found any for a couple of days. Ah, oh, it's a bullet train. And here we are, the timeline from the past, a horse and cart all the way through to the maglev train it says for safety please walk if you're excited to see all the trains no running wow this very first room has symbolic trains for railways in japan starting off with this old train which broke a speed record and then every train in here broke another speed record getting faster and faster to the prototype of the maglev train which is currently being built between tokyo and nagoya it's so cool we get to see it in real life and all the trains in here are real and authentic they're not replicas and you can go inside them this is the c-class steam train which ran at 129 kilometers an hour that broke the speed record at the time. Next is the 300X Shinkansen, which ran at 443 kilometers an hour. And then we've got the superconducting maglev train, which ran at 581 kilometers an hour. 
so much faster than the original record-breaking train here. It's good to see they've got ramps here, so it is accessible if you don't do stairs. There's lots of English on all the signs around the museum, so you can understand everything. There's an audio guide in English and other languages. First you have to join the Wi-Fi of the museum and then you can access the audio guide on your phone. If you look for this symbol, it tells you where you can use the audio guide in other languages. So we're going to try out the audio guide. And then we've got the numbers, which do you want to get to here? The top number is for the exhibit and then the one underneath is for the explanation. It's 01 and then 02. Yes, large counting wheels. You could bring some headphones with you if you want to hear the audio guide more clearly with the music in the museum. It's amazing you can go right up to all these record breaking trains and you can touch them. <laughs> the record was broken in July 1996. Apparently the world speed record for a train. 581 kilometers an hour. The current fastest bullet train in Japan, the Hayabusa, runs at 320 kilometers an hour. So this is much faster. Here's the Guinness World Records certificate. It's officially amazing. <laughs> what a certificate to get. That is amazing. This section is the superconducting part of the train. At this point, I didn't really understand how this works, but there are interactive exhibits coming up that explain all about it. It's crazy to think we're inside the train that broke the record. This went that fast. On to the main part of the museum, the Great Rolling Stock Hall. You can go inside these trains. There's a lot to see here. So as well as the trains in the middle, there's all these displays and exhibits all down the edge showing you how various things work. And lots of them have buttons you can press or levers to pull so you can understand things better. This display tells you about a day in the life of the Shinkansen, what happens throughout the 24 hours from the first trains going to the last ones in the day and what all the different teams of staff do. It was amazing to see all the maintenance happening every day and that's how they keep the Shinkansen running so perfectly. With, they don't wait till there's a problem, they check it every day to keep it running well. And how often do they clean? A team of 50 people clean the whole train in 10 minutes. That's amazing. More impressively, they spend 10 minutes cleaning the train. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they do that in England. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> so every night they do maintenance on the tracks. They replace the ballast or they replace the tracks when they need to. That was so interesting, seeing the, the old track being taken off and the new one being put on at the same time. It looked like it was really flexible, but it isn't. And that's how they keep it so safe. We say over a thousand workers every night. Yeah. That's amazing, so many people. Yeah, they really do keep this running smoothly and That's safe. how the service is so good. Amazing. It goes into detail about features of the bullet train and how they make it faster and safer. It's fascinating to see how the bullet train network operates as a whole infrastructure. We're going to make an earthquake happen by pressing the button. Oh, there we are. Signal's being relayed. Oh, here we go. Earthquake. And the train continues. This is how the seats have been changed through the various models of the Shinkansen. How comfortable are Shinkansen seats? Answer, very comfortable. These were in the 300 series, then the 700 series, and the ones we know and love in the N700. Even these are pretty nice. These soft padded seats. This is more upright. They were better, <laughs> the original. Can you recline them? I think there's a recline in the... Oh, there. oh, there we are. <laughs> and we've sat on these many a time. Most of the videos have English subtitles. It's fascinating how much work goes into keeping the Shinkansen network running smoothly. Everyone's queuing up to reserve tickets. We did that the other day. <laughs> If you want to know how to reserve seats on the Shinkansen, there's a video on my channel. There's another stamp. If I realised there was another one, I would have left a bit more space on the page. It looks like there's a stamp rally, so you can go around and collect all the different trains. So, so far I've got the Zero series. We've got the 8, 800 series and the 161 series. You can go inside all the trains and they're all real. This is the green car in the Series Zero Shinkansen that was made in 1986. 
Now this is exciting, we get to go inside Dr Yellow. It's a special train they use to check the tracks. It runs once every 10 days and if you see it, it's supposed to be lucky. Inside Dr Yellow, you can go inside and sit down and watch a film about how they do maintenance on the tracks. complete English mode. In the cafe you can get a Dr Yellow lunchbox. Little did I know, the following week I'd see Dr Yellow in the wild for the first time at Kyoto Station. It's Dr Yellow! Is that really him or it? Amazing, that's so lucky I didn't think we'd see it. Bye bye Dr Yellow. This is their grandparents and now retired Dr Yellow. And it's another stamp. Which one is this? The N700. Oh, there's the sheets for the proper stamp rally. I've just been collecting them in my stamp book. It's purple. There we are. This is Zurashi Mado, a mascot in the shape of a window on the bullet train who promotes travel on the Tokaido Shinkansen. Phil, so you're about to get run over. <laughs> Why does the Shinkansen have little impact on the environment? It's good to see that over time the different models have become more energy efficient even as they've become faster. And here's their carbon footprint compared to an aeroplane. When you're traveling around Japan, it's much more eco-friendly to take the bullet train than a domestic flight. There's a little outside section with the Shinkansen. So the cafe is inside, and then if you want, you can bring your food to eat out here inside the Shinkansen. And if you want to see what the green car's like, it's the car at the end of the train. That's the one we're in now. You can have your photo taken here, and then at the kiosk, they've got various things like key rings, you can have your souvenir photo on. We're gonna go on the double-decker train. There's always something exciting about double-decker trains. There were lots of kids at the museum, so please enjoy the sound of their shoes with squeakers in. Interesting to compare this on the older train to the Shinkansen bathrooms we were on yesterday on their newest one. Uh, here's the stairs to the upper level. There's two flights. Oh, it looks fancy up here. Ooh, it's the buffet car upstairs. There's the kitchen. And it's set out just like a restaurant. You must get a nice view from the windows as well. There's a little dumb waiter to get stuff from downstairs. Next, let's have a look around the superconducting maglev room. This behind me is the maglev simulator. So you go in and it's got rows of seats. So you can see what it's like riding the maglev train, which we'll be able to do in 2027 when the new line opens. It started off going at the speed of a regular Shinkansen, which is about 287 kilometers an hour. Then it accelerated to maglev speed, 500 kilometers an hour and then when it slowed back down you could really feel the difference it felt like you were going really slowly when it was at normal Shinkansen speed when the train first sets off it runs on wheels and then when it gets fast enough the wheels retract and you could really feel the difference of how it was a little bit bumpy with the wheels and then the wheels retracted and it was so smooth it is in Japanese normally they switched it to English for us so we could understand it I'm not sure if they do that for everyone but you can still feel the experience even if it is all in Japanese and the displays in this room explain how magnetic levitation works, how it moves the train along and how the train floats. These are models of all the prototypes they've built over the years for the Maglev train. They did successful levitated running in 1972. That's ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got little videos of them. It looks cute, doesn't it? Even the first ones look really futuristic. This one is from the 1970s. And there's the final one, we saw that in the other room. I didn't realise the new maglev trains are driverless, they're controlled by a central control office and they can continue even if there's an earthquake because the magnets keep them in the middle of the track, they don't hit the sides. The displays do a really good job of helping you understand how the technology works with lots of buttons and things to play on. We're finding out how superconducting magnets move the train along. So when you press the button, it activates the magnets and the train should move. This train's not making the world speed record at the moment. Turn the handle, can you make the maglet levitate? Oh, here we go. We're going a lot faster, Amy. And that was actually happening because of the magnets going around. Can you go around a curb smoothly? I doubt it. I can't believe these trains will be running so soon in 2027. They seem so futuristic. It's the new maglev train, the MLX. 
I tried the Shinkansen driving simulator. I was really lucky to have a tutorial on the controls from a former Shinkansen driver. It's really good to know that the people running the museum have a genuine enthusiasm for trains and the railway. I had special permission to film from the museum. We're waiting for the doors to shut. Everyone's getting on at the moment. Okay, time is okay. Door closed. Okay, so please, please Break. use brake handle. Please. Okay, the brakes off. Yes, brake soft and now zero kilo pascal. Okay, so please accept. Okay, let's go. Oh. <laughs> Watching our speed here. Speed limits and signals are displayed on a screen inside the train instead of signs outside because you're going so fast. Tokyo Tower. <laughs> Signal 285, okay, go. Full, not ah, full speed. Full speed. You can feel us accelerating. This shows our speed. There's Tokyo Station. She's your car, I think we'll be going through. Oh, there's another train. <laughs> I want to beep at them. And we're going into the countryside. I can feel it when the track is changing gradient when we're going slightly up or downhill. You can feel it tilting. Yeah. And it tilts as you go around corners as well. The automatic brake was going on then to yeah. keep us at the right speed. We're going to get everyone to Nagoya on time. Here we're at full speed. It's over there. It's Mount Fuji. Such a perfect view. It's nice for the train drivers. <laughs> yeah, this shows the graph of our speed, so we've been going along at more or less top speed. And in one minute, you'll be going through the next station. She's Orca, but we don't have to slow down, we can just speed on through. How are you feeling about having to, uh, to slow down for oh, the station? No, do you think I'll manage to stop in the right time? I think that's a bit that would stress me out. That seems like the most difficult part, I think. I did practice by playing Denture de Go in the arcade a few days before, driving the Yamanote line. This is where we'll have to slow down when we get to the station. So it takes you to 70 kilometres an hour, and then when you get to 30, it's very all manual control, isn't it? <laughs> Getting close. Keeping an eye on the signals. It's coming up. There's our hotel in Nagoya, right on the station. Here it comes. See the platform. Don't worry, we're going to overshoot A now. A couple more. There we go. Down to 30. Oh no, too we slow. stopped too early. <laughs> <laughs> Accelerate. Just a little bit. It's a difficult job. <laughs> I think the train's going to be late. <laughs> Oh, too early, oh, Amy. Oh no! The people at the back won't be able to get off. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we stopped too early. Sorry to the people in the back carriages. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't the best train driver, but it was fun to try driving the Shinkansen. Stopping at the station is definitely the hardest part. There's a couple of simulators here. There's a normal train driving simulator, a train crew simulator where you can be a conductor, and there's the Shinkansen driving simulator, which was the one that I did. They take about 10 minutes and it is either 100 yen or 500 yen, depending on which one you pick. Previously, tickets for the simulators were allocated by a lottery, but when I visited, it was first come, first served. So just check that before you visit in case it changes in future. If you don't manage to get a ticket for the simulator, you can watch other people driving. Next, we've got one of my favorite parts, the Great Railway Diorama. It reproduces the central Japan area in miniature 180th to 187th scale. There's so much to look at. You can spend ages watching everything going on and spotting places you recognize. I bet this is gonna look real on the camera. Oh, that's yellow, good luck for us. Oh, that must be Kyoto. There's Kiyomizu Dera. There's Shirakado in Takayama. Nagoya Castle. There's our hotel in Nagoya, a mini version. <laughs> so many platforms at the station. This reminded me of the view from my window at our hotel in Nagoya from my previous video. And down here, there's the maglev trains, trains of the future. 
This looks like it, doesn't it? Because a lot of the track was underground, so they must start off underground as well. Here's where we are, the Maglev Museum. There's a music festival going on here. This is so cool. There's so many trains going around. Oh, and there's a bus as well. Ah, there's the Diver, the Fuji TV building, the Ferris wheel, and there's the Rainbow Bridge with that track that goes in a circle. Oh, cute! The Himiko is my favourite boat. It's designed by an anime artist. It runs between a diver and a saxer in Tokyo. The theme of the diorama is a day in the life of the railway. The lighting changes between day and night. There's the sky tree. Tokyo Tower. It's not the boat in the water moving around as well. If you like this, you'd also enjoy Small World Tokyo. I've got a video coming up about it. That also has lots of miniature scenes, but definitely not as many trains as this one. I really enjoyed the diorama. In the end, we managed to tear ourselves away from it to take a look at what's upstairs. So from up here, you can see the trains from old to new and even today's N700 out the window outside. There's a lot more to see here than I expected. We've spent quite a few hours looking round and there's just so many displays and you can go inside all the trains and then there's upstairs as well. There is a lot here. I've really enjoyed looking round here. I was excited to come here because I love the Shinkansen and the bullet train and it's great to see all the trains up close in real life. I think even if you're just a little bit interested in Japanese trains, I think you'd enjoy it here. It's definitely a good place for kids to come because there's loads of things to play on and buttons to press and levers and films. And then adults can enjoy it too because you can read all the exhibits and understand things properly. You might expect a train museum to just be a load of old trains, but you can actually learn how the whole Shinkansen system works, which is really interesting because it is amazing how they provide such good service, how it always runs on time, how it's so clean and so efficient. It might sound like I'm just being complimentary because they gave me a ticket, but I have genuinely enjoyed it here and I have been excited about coming here for years. We've just never been in Nagoya before so I'm so glad I could finally come along. So what do you think of the museum? I've really enjoyed it. I'm surprised by how much I've enjoyed it. I was kind of looking forward to it because I, I like the trains and I like to see how they work. Um, but there's loads here and we've been here now for just over four hours and I don't think we've seen everything and I don't think we've been that slow either. No, and we haven't got bored or anything. No, I mean we spent, the whole time. we spent half an hour in the um, train simulator uh, and we spent some time talking to the staff here who are all lovely. Yeah, they're just a lot to look at and it's, it's yeah, a really pleasant place to come. I can't really film it because there's a load of kids in there, but there is a room for kids to play in. It's got pretend ticket barriers at the entrance and there's a little Shinkansen they can sit in and there's play rail model trains to play with and there's also a soft play room with a squishy Shinkansen slide. The cafe is called Delica Station, just like the kiosks on the platform at stations. Here's the menu in the cafe. They have Dr. Yellow water bottles, ice creams, crisps, and there's some bento boxes. And there's the Dr. Yellow bento box. Oh, they've got bottles of the different Shinkansen trains. They've got bento boxes. Quite a lot of things have sold out now. It's half three, so it's not really lunchtime. So if you want a bento, probably best to get here earlier at actual lunchtime. From upstairs, there's also a great view of those record-breaking trains we saw at the start. That's how the doors open on the new Maglev train. That's pretty cool. I wonder if they'll look like that on the wall. I hope so. There's all the old train seats to sit and relax on. You're not supposed to film the videos in the museum, but we just watched this film where there was projection mapping on this model of the front of a train, and it was so effective and really creative. It's quite dark, so I don't think this is coming out very well. You can buy paper models of trains to fold and make up. If you want to try these at home, there are paper train models on JR Central's website that you can download for free and print at home. And there's tables here with glue so you can sit and make them. Have a quiet moment of sit down. Here's the last one upstairs. It's the 700. There we are, complete the set. This train's all the way from the UK. The sign on the side says Preston and the one in front of it is from the USA, from New York. 
Here's some models from the diorama up close. Oh, these must be from seasonal festivals throughout the year. That's a, a Matsuri stand, like from Obon. There's streamers for Tanabata and carp streamers for Children's Day. And the Cherry Blossom Festival, they're all having a Hanami party. The control room. Wow. I guess it's quite a complex thing. That must be where they make the models. That must be so much fun if you're into model making. Here's model trains from the diorama up close. Lots of yellow. And it's the shop. I think they've got a lot of cool stuff. It's cutlery, like a Shinkansen. All this stuff is amazing. Shinkan socks. Unfortunately, these ones are kids' sizes. I saw cakes of this chick in the station. I think it's something local to Nagoya. Piorin. Shinkan pencils. Shinkan pen. <laughs> Shinkan pen, perfect. <laughs> well, we've had a lovely day at the SC Maglev and Railway Park. I, again, it's not just for train nerds, it's not just a load of old trains, it actually is genuinely interesting and a really good place for families to come as well. Thank you again to JR Central and to the museum for the ticket and also the staff are all really friendly and helpful. The staff around the museum and in the cafe and in the shop were all really lovely. Tickets are 1000 yen for adults and 500 yen for children. It's closed on Tuesdays, but just check that before you go in case it changes in future. Really close to the train museum is Legoland, Japan, and outside there's a load of shops and restaurants that you can get to without having an admission ticket. It's called Maker's Pier. I guess it's like the Legoland Japan version of Downtown Disney or Disney Springs. On the way from the station to Legoland, there's this slope or stairs for adults to go down, and there's a slide for kids. That's really fun.